October 20th. Earth enters a cosmic bullseye. Not one, but two comets. Swan, the Emerald Wanderer discovered on September 11th by a Ukrainian amateur, and Lemon, a dust-laden stranger from January, are both surging toward peak brilliance. At the same moment, the annual Orionid meteor shower ignites overhead, fueled by debris from Halley's Comet. Astronomers call this triple alignment a once-in-a-lifetime event, and the data backs them up. Two rare comets, a new moon's darkest skies, and up to 25 meteors an hour, all converging just before dawn. What are the odds of witnessing this celestial trio, and what makes this night so extraordinarily timed? The full story of the dual comet alert starts right here. September 11, 2025. Vladimir Bezugli, scanning ultraviolet images from the SOHO SWAN instrument, spotted a streak that didn't belong. In a matter of hours, he was cross-checking archival frames, ruling out instrument glitches, and sending alerts across amateur astronomy forums. The confirmation came fast. C slash 2025 R2, now officially Comet Swan, had entered the watch lists of both professionals and hobbyists worldwide. By mid-October, Swan was already visible in binoculars at magnitude 6, its brightness climbing by the night. Forbes and major observatories logged its progress, each update drawing more eyes to the northeast sky. Forecasts pointed to October 20th as the main event, Swan possibly peaking at magnitude 4. That's naked eye territory, provided you have dark skies and a clear horizon. For Bazoogly, the moment was more than a technical triumph. His name now traveled with every new sighting, every camera pointed skyward, every report of a growing emerald glow. The comet had become a headline object, and the world was watching. January 2025. The Mount Lemmon survey team in Arizona was running its automated telescopes through another night's sweep when they caught a faint, trailing glow in Leo. The object, soon confirmed as C-2025A6, took on the survey's name, Lemon, joining a lineage of discoveries credited to this mountain's robotic eyes. Unlike Swan's vivid emerald, Lemon's appearance is all about dust. Its tail stretches broad and sandy, reflecting sunlight in a pale yellow-white, a classic signature of dust-rich comets that have looped past the sun before. The difference is easy to spot. Lemon's glow is softer, its core fainter, but the tail fans out wider, sometimes appearing almost ghostly in binoculars. For northern observers, Lemon hovers low in the southeast, hugging the horizon near Leo just before dawn. Any haze, trees, or buildings can erase it from view. Catching lemon means scanning early and choosing a site with a clear, unobstructed line to the southeast. The challenge only adds to its appeal. While Swan climbs higher and flashes green, lemon keeps its distance, trailing a golden veil over the waking sky. October 20th. The sky turns its darkest shade. No moon, no glare, just open blackness overhead. This is the window astronomers wait for. Two hours before dawn, when the horizon is still ink and both comets are poised for their best show. Swan climbs in the northeast, its green core sharpening as the minutes tick by. Lemon hovers low in the southeast, a faint, broad tail brushing the edge of Leo. The real wild card is the Orionid meteor shower, ramping up as Earth plows through Halley's ancient dust. On a good night, 25 meteors an hour slice out from Orion's shoulder, some leaving glowing trails that linger for seconds. The radiant sits high in the east, right where the action is thickest. Every factor, moonless sky, comet paths, meteor activity, lines up for this brief pre-dawn window. 
A clear horizon and low light pollution are all that stand between you and a triple encounter with the solar system's oldest travelers. Binoculars is first. An 8x42 or 10x50 pair opens up the sky for both comets, wide enough to sweep the northeast for Swan's brightening core, nimble enough to catch Lemon's pale tail low in the southeast. The numbers matter. 8x42 gives a steadier, lighter hold for long scans. 10x50 pulls in more light, revealing faint detail, but demands a steady grip or tripod. For those with a small telescope, three to six inches across, the view tightens. Now, the coma's subtle structure, the tail's curve, and even hints of color gradients come alive, though the field narrows and tracking becomes trickier as the comets drift close to the horizon. Comfort is non-negotiable. A reclining chair or thick blanket lets your eyes search the sky without straining your neck. Layer up. Temperatures before dawn drop fast, even in October. Red flashlights are essential. They preserve night vision, letting you check star charts or adjust settings without erasing 20 minutes of dark adaptation. That's the key number, 20 minutes. Give your eyes time in the dark, and faint features leap out where none seemed to exist before. Direction is everything. Swan rises in the northeast, so set your compass or phone to 45 degrees. Lemon demands a southeast line near 120 degrees, hugging the horizon just before dawn. The Orionids break out from due east, so keep your field open in that direction. The best sky watchers treat the horizon as a map. No trees, no buildings, no city glow. Every degree of clear sky means another chance to catch a comet, a meteor, or both in a single sweep. Swan's color isn't just a trick of the eye, it's chemistry in action. As sunlight hits the comet, it breaks apart diatomic carbon molecules known as C2 in the coma. The result? A sharp, emerald green glow, unique among bright comets this decade. That green is a signature of fresh volatile material, evidence that Swan is making its first or one of its first trips through the inner solar system. The green light comes from a process called fluorescence. Solar ultraviolet energy excites the C2 molecules, which then shed that energy as visible green photons. It's a fleeting effect, strongest close to the sun, and fades as the comet moves away. Lemon, by contrast, puts on a subtler show. Its broad, yellow-white tail is a classic product of dust scattering. Here, sunlight bounces off countless microscopic grains, mainly silicates and carbon compounds thrown off by the nucleus. The effect, called my scattering, favors longer wavelengths, giving lemon's tail a sandy golden hue. This dust doesn't glow by itself. It simply reflects and diffuses sunlight, making the tail appear broader and less sharply defined than Swan's gas-driven coma. The Orionids bring a different kind of energy. Each meteor slams into the atmosphere at nearly 66 kilometers per second, faster than almost any other annual shower. At that speed, even a pebble-sized particle ionizes the air, producing streaks of white, green, or even red. The color depends on both the meteor's minerals and the atmospheric gases it excites. Magnesium and sodium for white, nickel for green, oxygen for red. As NASA's meteor expert puts it, Orionids are among the fastest meteors we see, leaving long, glowing trains and sometimes even a telltale green flash in one frame, all the drama of the solar system's ancient past. ISO 1600 to 3200. That's the sweet spot for capturing faint comets and meteors under a dark, moonless sky. Open up your lens to f2.8 if you can, letting in every photon. For exposure, 15 to 30 seconds keeps the stars sharp while still gathering enough light to reveal Swan's green coma, Lemon's dust tail, and the streaks of Orionids. Wide-angle lenses 14 to 24 millimeters frame more sky. 
boosting your odds of catching both comets and a meteor in a single shot. Manual focus is non-negotiable. Set it to infinity using a bright star as your guide. An intervalometer takes the pressure off. Set it to fire continuously, stacking frames later to catch every meteor flash. Under these settings, even a single pre-dawn session can yield a gallery of cosmic visitors. Every continent has a gathering spot this week. Lowell Observatory in Arizona streams all night, while Greenwich, Paris, and Tokyo host local watch parties. Blankets, binoculars, and telescopes lined up in city parks and rural fields. From the Atacama to Namibia, seasoned sky watchers coordinate their sessions, comparing meteor counts and comet photos in real time. The hashtag, hashtag comet double feature is already trending, with thousands posting their best frames, some capturing both comets and the streak of an Orionid in a single shot. For those clouded out or far from dark skies, planetariums and science centers are running global live streams, letting anyone join the event from a screen. This isn't just a local spectacle, it's a worldwide project. A moment when the sky draws everyone together. And with the Vera Rubin Observatory coming online soon, the next surprise alignment may be just around the corner. One more reason to keep looking up and sharing the view. On October 20th, 2025, two comets, SWAN, discovered by Vladimir Bazugli on September 11th, and Lemon, first identified in January, will share the pre-dawn sky with the Orionid meteor shower, which averages 25 meteors per hour. Archival records confirm that Swan's green glow results from diatomic carbon, while Lemon's dust-rich tail reflects sunlight low in the southeast. The new moon provides the darkest skies for observation, a rare alignment documented by ephemerides and observatory logs. Yet, the precise evolution of each comet's activity and the full extent of their chemical makeup are still under study, with new data expected from ongoing spectroscopic surveys. This event underscores how collaborations among amateurs, professionals, and automated surveys like the Vera Rubin Telescope continue to expand our knowledge of near-Earth objects. As global observatories prepare public watch parties and live streams, October 20th stands as a documented reminder that the universe's rare alignments are both observable and open to discovery for everyone.